The man we are looking at today wanted to be a doctor, but his family could not afford the fees, so he became a teacher instead. It is fortunate that he did not become a doctor because instead he became a keen figure in bringing down the apartheid regime in South Africa. This man stands among the world's foremost human rights activists, men like Nelson Mandela, Gandhi and Martin Luther King. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. He reads the Bible for spiritual enrichment every day. His name is Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu was born in 1931 in Transvaal in South Africa. He had a happy upbringing. His father was a teacher and his mother cooked and cleaned at a school for the blind. He especially loved reading comic strips, Aesop's fables and the plays of Shakespeare. His family moved to Johannesburg when Desmond was 12 years old. One day he was out walking with his mother when a white man, a priest named Trevor Huddleston, tipped his hat to her, the first time he had ever seen a white man pay this respect to a black woman. The incident made a profound impression on Tutu, teaching him that he need not accept discrimination. He also learned that religion could be a powerful tool for advocating racial equality. Trevor Huddleston became a friend and mentor. In 1948, when Tutu was 17 years old, the National Party won control of the government and codified the nation's long present segregation and inequality into the official rigid policy of apartheid. Black Africans had no vote and were forced to live in specific areas. Desmond obtained teaching qualifications and taught at Johannesburg Bantu High School for three years, but he resigned after a government act changed education for blacks and limited their education possibilities. After obtaining theology qualifications, firstly in South Africa and then in London for a higher degree, he became an Anglican priest in 1960. 1960 was the year the South African government began a program of forced relocation of black Africans and Asians out of newly designated white areas. Millions were deported to the homelands and only permitted to return as guest workers. Tutu's rise to international prominence began when he became the first black person to be appointed the Anglican Dean of Johannesburg in 1975. It was in this position that he emerged as one of the most prominent and eloquent voices in the South African anti-apartheid movement. Tutu explained, I realised that I had been given a platform that was not readily available to many blacks, and most of our leaders were either now in chains or in exile. And I said, well, I'm going to use this to seek to try to articulate our aspirations and the anguishes of our people. This he did and constantly challenged white rule publicly in his sermons and at every opportunity. In 1976, he became Bishop of Lesotho for three years. The year 1976 was the year of the Soweto riots. These riots were against the government's use of Afrikaans as a compulsory medium of instruction in black schools and caused a massive uprising against apartheid. In 1978 he became the Secretary General of the South African Council of Churches. This position gave Bishop Tutu a national platform to denounce the apartheid system as evil and unchristian. He encouraged non-violent resistance to the apartheid regime and advocated an economic boycott of the country by other countries. He often compared apartheid to Nazism and communism. As a result, the government twice revoked his passport and he was jailed briefly in 1980 after a protest march. In 1984, he received the Nobel Peace Prize. This transformed South Africa's anti-apartheid movement into a truly international force with sympathies all across the globe. Desmond said about the award, it opened doors, which was important for our people. In 1985, the US and UK stopped any investments in South Africa to put pressure on the South African government. It was in this year that he became the first black bishop of Johannesburg. He was on the rise and a year later Desmond became the Bishop of Cape Town and the first black person to be the head of the Anglican Church in South Africa. He was now speaking on behalf of all Anglican Christians in South Africa. Eventually apartheid was defeated and the country had its first multiracial elections in 1994. President Mandela appointed Archbishop Tutu to chair the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This commission was to investigate the human rights violations of the previous 34 years. 
Desmond Tutu counsel forgiveness and cooperation rather than revenge for past injustice. Tribute should also be paid to the other church leaders who appointed a black African Tutu to high positions and maintained support for him during the apartheid years. Desmond Tutu was the right man in the right place at the right time and in the right position to exert pressure on the apartheid government of South Africa and to help bring apartheid to an end. Since then Desmond has been an outspoken advocate for many oppressed peoples around the world. We salute Desmond Tutu, a Christian who spoke out against injustice rather than silently capitulating to strong political forces. So